Intel is lining up with two, vent uh, two dozen venture capital firms to make a big investment in U.S. technology jobs. CEO Paul Odellini made the announcement in Washington today, and he took a few shots at Uncle Sam, too. Bloomberg's Brian Weiss sat down with him for an exclusive interview. Brian? Mark, that's right. Intel committing $200 million of its own money to a pot of more than $3 billion bucks in venture capital funds to spur those technology job growth over the next two years. And I spoke with Paul Odellini, the company's president and CEO, in an exclusive, and I asked him, with the economy struggling right now, why make this investment right now? Why not? I mean, uh, part, part of the thinking was that um, <clears throat> one of the things that I think you need to do to come out of recessions is restore confidence. And uh, by making this statement in terms of the, the venture capital industry and the, and the private venture, corporate venture capital industry willing to come together and put their money into the U.S. and to U.S. companies in a very short period of time, 24 months, uh, I think says that there's confidence uh, from this community in terms of the future. A, uh, we think there's a good return. B, it'll have, it'll have some job effect, which is I think we all would, would applaud at this point in time. And see, it's probably a good time to make these kinds of investments, just in terms of the return that you likely get over time. How will it work? Some say this is just a letter of intent from these venture capital firms that it would have more teeth if there was actually some fund or a mechanism to get this money out. How did you respond to that? Well, we're all going to do, do our own thing. We, we, we're not, it's not a giant fund by definition, but, it, but, it, but it's, I can tell you from Intel's perspective, it's something we hadn't planned to do until we did this. So from that perspective, it is going to be $200 million that we will put into uh, U.S. firms uh, and startups in this time frame that you know, was, was unplanned before today. I suspect the other venture firms will have a similar take on it. You expressed some, cur some criticism today of Washington, of Congress and the administration, not doing enough for research and development. What specific steps can you outline, can you tell? My criticism was on the R&D tax credit, which uh, is not permanent in the United States. It's something that you have to appeal for every year and it gets passed so far, but it's gone from being the highest in the world to among the lowest in the world. And in contrast to other countries, it is substantially lower. And when you look at where should one hire an engineer, that is a factor. All things being equal, it's a lot cheaper to do it in a country which is giving you two or three times the credit. President Obama has said that education, innovation, research and development, that these are cornerstones of his, of his uh, tenure, that he's going he's gonna to invest in these things. You, one year in, give him a letter grade. Thank what's what's his? I don't give letter sure. grades. I'm sorry. Thank I'm in business. I'm not teach. I'm not a teacher. Your take on his first year? You know, I, 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 at, at 50,000 feet, um, the economy is stabilized. And a year, you know, a year ago this week, I was here, and it wasn't clear where things were going. Uh, people were scared. Uh, we didn't know if the banks would collapse. We didn't know if the recession would ever end. We didn't know if we had a depression coming. So you look a year later, and you know, actually have some causes for optimism. Yeah, if you're unemployed, it's it's not terribly optimistic. But if you look if you look at the at the fundamentals, um, pe businesses are starting to grow again. People are making investments, and so you have to feel like they manage their way through this pretty well. So you can see there, he was a little reluctant to criticize the White House. He spin it, spin it a little positively, but he made it clear in his speech on innovation, on math and science education, the White House, Congress, they need to be doing a lot more in these fields. Back to you. You know, Brian, he just said something that I haven't heard a lot of people say. I guess he spoke the truth. He said, if you're unemployed, you're not terribly optimistic. That having been said, what did he have to say about the corporate tax rate? Yeah, he talked a little bit about this in his speech, and I asked him if he really believes that lowering the corporate tax rate is feasible given the fiscal challenges in the United States with the budget crisis and Democratic leadership here in Washington, both in Congress and the administration. He pointed out that the corporate tax rate is second highest in the world, and he told me it stops U.S. companies like his from competing in the rest of the world. He says it needs to be addressed or the U.S. will continue to slip in those technology fields. Mark. Bloomberg's Brian Weiss with uh, Intel CEO uh, Paul Odolini. Brian, thanks. Nice job.